Yeah, hi everyone. So in this short talk, I want to talk about LoRa in action. Insights from fine-tuning LLMs with low rank adaptation. So just briefly about myself, uh, yeah, my name is Sebastian and most of you probably know me from my books or my head of AI magazine. I currently work at uh, Lightning AI where I do a lot of exciting work on yeah, AI research and AI education. And we develop a lot of exciting yeah, open source frameworks like PyTorch Lightning, um, LitGPT, Fabric and so forth. So before I start the talk, just briefly uh, setting the stage here with the pre-training and fine-tuning pipeline that we usually use for LLMs. So an LLM usually starts with a large unlabeled general text corpus, so the pre-trained LLM or foundation model. And that's usually as practitioners, uh, that we that's something we download from a model hub, for example. And then if we have a specific problem, a domain specific problem, for example, in the medical domains or finance, we might want to train the LLM further on domain specific data if we have such data. Then once the LLM is uh, ready, we can either use the pre-trained LLM with in context learning capabilities where we yeah, ask questions, provide examples in the context, or we might want to fine tune the LLM to let's say, um, better follow instructions. And this is what the talk here focuses on, better yeah, instruction fine tuning. So uh, in this particular talk, I only used uh, supervised instruction fine tuning. I know there are different ways of um, yeah, instruction fine tuning, including uh, reinforcement learning with human feedback and direct um, preference optimization and so forth. But these are yeah, future problems. So here we focus on uh, supervised instruction fine tuning where we have a data set consisting of the instruction um, and optionally an input. And then the LLM's task is to generate the output. Usually it's a yeah, next token prediction task where the uh, LLM learns to generate one word at a time for the output. So to make this more efficient, because yeah, LLMs are large, people over the years developed many, many different techniques. And um, this is a nice survey here where yeah, most of the popular techniques for parameter efficient fine, -tunes, uh, fine tuning are visualized. But by far the most popular method is a low rank adaptation LoRa. And that's probably because um, it's yeah, very nice and elegant and works well in practice. So how does LoRa work before I dive more into the experiments. What is LoRa and how does it work? So to explain that with a, let's say a, a few slides because we only have so much time here. Um, so imagine you have the regular fine tuning um, setup where you want to update the pre-trained weights. Here I'm writing this uh, separately where you have the pre-trained weights on the left hand side and you have the weight update here on the right hand side. And I'm writing it like this so that I can then show you how LoRa uh, relates to that. So uh, imagine you saved the weight update separately as a separate matrix instead of just applying it back to the pre-trained weights. Then you can think of LoRa as a low rank um, approximation or a decomposition of that weight matrix. So instead of on the left hand side learning this full weight update matrix, is in regular fine tuning, what LoRa is doing, it's learning these two smaller matrices. And the trick here is that we have this rank and uh, we can choose a very small rank for these matrices to save a lot of uh, parameters, which will make the training more efficient. So for example, consider on the left hand side, we have 5,000 times 1,000 parameters, for example, that would be 5 million parameters in that matrix in total. And on the right hand side, if we have a rank of 10, we would have 10 times 1,000, or, or let's say 5,000 times 10 plus 10 times 1,000, which is 60,000 parameters, which is much less than 5 million. Um, of course, R, the rank is a hyperparameter, but if we choose a small R like 10 here, then we can save a lot of parameters. And the idea is that um, with this ro a low rank decomposition, we can approximate the results of the full weight update here. Now in practice, however, there are lots of settings. So when we are using LoRa, there are lots of little, yeah, little tweaks we can do. There are lots of parameters that come with LoRa, for example, for which layers we want to um, apply LoRa, or there's also the scaling factor alpha and so forth. So for now, I will start with default parameters that we have chosen in LitGPT. So this is only activating LoRa for a few layers in this uh, LLM. 
So query, key, and value, and so forth, they refer to the layers in an LLM, the query, key, and value of a attention um, head. And so we are only enabling it here for f a few, and later we will change these settings. So I wanted to share now a few of the results I got uh, from running hundreds, if not thousands of experiments. And if you're interested, um, there are also tutorials on GitHub. So I'm not showing any code here because it's a short talk, but if you want to yeah, run uh, LoRa fine tuning yourself, um, you can find the tutorials here. So to start with, uh, one thing I <laughs> found and I found very nice is that LoRa runs are surprisingly consistent, which means when I was changing the hyper as uh, the random seed, I found that the results were pretty consistent across runs, which is a good um, good uh, thing to have when you are running experiments. So you know, okay, these are approximately reproducible, and it's if you get some outliers, it's, it's less likely due to the random seed or due to chance. Um, the other one was I was trying as hard as possible to save compute memory so that I can later on train larger LLMs on one GPU. So um, here I was doing experiments with a 7 billion Lama 2 model. The reason is because I wanted to also later compare to full fine tuning and I couldn't do or couldn't fit larger LLMs um, if I wanted to do full fine tuning. In any case, so when I used QLoRa, which is a quantized version of LoRa, I was able to save about seven gigabytes, in, in this case, 33% uh, of the memory, which is really nice. But yeah, in practice, uh, be aware if you use quantized LoRa because of the additional quantization and dequantization steps, there's an additional cost, uh, computation costs. So in this case, it was a 39% runtime increase. In practice, personally, I find it more useful to reduce memory because I usually can wait a few more hours, let's say if I run things overnight. But if I run out of memory, it's usually the distinction between being able to run something on the GPU or not. So I, I kind of like the memory savings here. Uh, when it comes to the results uh, on the benchmarks I tested it on, uh, using QLoRa, I would say it's plus minus zero. On one task, it was uh, slightly better, and on one task, it was um, slightly worse. So I wouldn't say one is necessarily universally better than the other. I would say it's like plus minus zero, depending on what you're looking at here. Uh, the next experiment was um, I wanted to save even more memory, and I was wondering, can I swap Adam with SGD? Because Adam saves uh, two additional parameters for each model parameter, which can be expensive if you have large models. So I was wondering, uh, can I save memory if I just change uh, Adam to SGD? So here I was also adding a scheduler, because uh, without a scheduler, I was not able to good, uh, get good SGD results. But uh, yeah, the bottom line is that uh, SGD was slightly worse on one of the benchmarks compared, um, yeah, compared to Adam. Uh, however, unfortunately, the memory savings were minimal, and that is because we only had like uh, about four million trainable parameters here, because we were using a small rank. However, your mileage may vary if you use a larger rank. More on that later. But for comparison, when I changed the rank to 256. I got about uh, three gigabytes of savings, which can be actually significant. So if you are experimenting with larger ranks, yes, it is worthwhile thinking about uh, replacing Adam with um, SGD. So what about these other parameters now or hyperparameters now? So what if we enable LoRa for more param parameters in the network by activating or setting these hyperparameters to true? So if we do that, if we enable LoRa also for the key, the projection, the linear layers, and the projection head, we increase the number of trainable parameters in that model from 4 million to 20 million. It's a five times increase. But what is the increase in terms of the performance? Um, I wanted to say also, by the way, this takes about uh, three hours now. Uh, it's using 17 uh, eight, six gigabytes. Before we had something like 14 gigabytes, so it's a three gigabyte increase. So if we do that, um, we can see that the results are slightly better, um, except on one benchmark, it's slightly worse. But overall, I would say, yeah, it's a mixed bag. So just increasing the hyperparameters does not really bring us that much, given that we increased the number of parameters by a, a factor of five. So what can we do about that? So there is uh, actually this um, scaling factor alpha here that we can change. So the scaling factor determines how strong, let's say, 
or how much of the 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 weight matrix we add to the original weights like we are scaling the the weight update here it's it's kind of like a learning rate if you will except uh, the learning rate is yeah only um, applied during the backward pass but here this is during the forward pass so if we um change the rank and we change the alpha um, we get various different results i'm showing you only the interesting ones so i tried smaller r's larger r's the r of 256 was performing best and i found that if you use an alpha of 512 which is about um alpha two times the rank then i usually oh, I, I would say roughly i got the best results here and you can see on most benchmarks there's an increase except uh, on one of them there's a decrease so again it's i would say overall improved but it is not um not amazing but this is what it is um, compared to the original llama model it is much better though i would say Okay, so um, yeah, uh, last uh, experiment is that also the data set is important. If you are experimenting with LLMs, I would say don't just tune hyperparameters, also consider data sets. So here I did an additional experiment using a 50 times smaller data set. And surprise, surprise, I got actually better results with this, a smaller data set. Uh, compared to the alpaca data set. So here um, I also ran a lot of experiments and I found that R256 and 512 was also performing best, but it ha I did have to change the batch size a bit um, to get good results. Um, lastly, for those who have questions about how does it compare to full fine tuning, uh, full fine tuning to my surprise was actually doing even worse. And so maybe it's the data set that was not very good, the alpaca data set. Um, so in that case, uh, full fine tuning was much more expensive, more than uh, twice the memory consumption, and also the runtime was increased. So here, um, the bottom line is, yeah, um, QLORA can be useful, but I would say also consider um, maybe the right data set. Uh, I think maybe the data set is more important even than choosing uh, hyperparameters sometimes. I mean, of course, you have to have a good data set and then choose hyperparameters because uh, even a good data set with bad hyperparameters is not good, but it's it's ba basically both um, that is important. Anyways, this was a short outline of some of the experiments and learnings from my experiments. I hope you found that useful. Um, it was pretty short, but if you're interested, I have many more additional e details here in this article. Um, there's, of course, always more future work, um, analyzing the overfitting, looking at conversational benchmarks. And I was also interested in yeah, combining um, Laura weights into an ensemble method. So if you have experience with that, we would love to hear from you what you found. And the other one is um, also I wanted to look into future benchmarks in terms of can LLMs actually learn new knowledge during fine tuning and vice versa. Can we use uh, Laura for pre-training? So if you have used Laura for pre-training, I would also be curious to hear what your experiences are with that. So um, with that, I want to close this uh, short uh, video with yeah um, something I found that is not every research story has a happy end. So sometimes you end up um, spending a lot of work and time on something and you don't get the super sensational results. But, you know, there are always uh, useful things to learn. So I learned, for example, um, when to when it's worthwhile to replace Adam with SGD, for example, and that it's useful to tweak the alpha and that, uh, yeah, you should probably consider trying out different um, hyperparameter configurations for enabling LoRa la layers and most of all, uh, focusing also more on the data set. So with that, I hope you uh, also learned something useful and thanks for listening.